Uh, sorry, we're a few minutes late there, everybody. We're uh, just experiencing some difficulties getting uh, one of my guests on. And, uh, well, as you know, this is an emergency uh, roundtable. Um, something happened the other day. Uh, I was uh, taking part in a, uh, a radio show on, on uh, No Holds Barred on Zeekly TV. And uh, later that night, I uh, wanted to go and find a link so I could repost it. And Zeekly TV was down. Now, you might uh, you know, ask yourself, why would it be down? Do they pay their bill, this or that, or the next thing? Well, the reason why they were down was because they were hit by DOS, or denial of service attacks. Um, the guest that I'm going to be having on right now is going to go over what a DOS attack is, um, what other types of attacks may be out there, and quite frankly, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of perturbed because it was the same night I did my call to arms video, and uh, here you go, right while I was going on about how we're under attack, Zeekly TV goes down couldn't help but be frustrated and uh, it's taken me this long to uh, to get uh, my act together and uh, do this broadcast. I've uh, been a little bit busy with uh, life getting in the way and what have you but uh, I'm going to uh, if any, I guess no one's actually watching at the moment so it's really kind of hard to take it to Q&A um, however if there is uh, any viewers at the moment that are listening live uh, love to uh, get some Q&A. If you have any questions, I'll answer them as best as I can. If you have any subjects regarding the attacks on websites or any other examples, go ahead and post them in the Q&A section. Uh, I'd like to get your feedback on this. But uh, yes, we have, uh, do you have a guest who wants to rename nameless uh, uh, only uh, to protect his uh, employment and he is going to go over uh, some issues regarding what these attacks are like or what 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 they entail anyway um, if any uh, we're going to reiterate a lot of this again on Saturday night show um, like I said this one's going to be a lot short shorter and sweeter <laughs> uh, it won't be three hours and 16 minutes I'm trying to keep it under uh, 40 minutes if at all possible I uh, Got some things to do uh, before I uh, retire for the night and do my long day again tomorrow. Anyway, um, my guest still hasn't gotten in. I think uh, software is installing, so uh, kind of bear with me. I'm going to ramble on a little bit longer. Um, I guess what I could do is uh, let's go uh, check out a Wikipedia entry and see what uh, DOS attacks are from, from a Wikipedia standpoint. Oh, there's James. James has joined us. Aha, he is in. Good. Don't have to resort to Wikipedia now. <laughs> How are you, James? Oh, not too bad. How about yourself? Excellent, excellent. Um, so I just kind of introduced the scenario. Um, our beloved uh, free speech protectors, uh, Zeekly TV, they went down. They were attacked. Apparently, I've been I've talked to a few people that they've been attacked on a regular basis with denial of service attacks. I was hoping maybe you could um, enlighten the listeners as to what these attacks are, what do they entail? Well, sure. Um, so first we understand that the internet is packets, it's packet-based technology. Um, every packet that's received pretty much has to be processed by whoever it's sending it to. So if you have a website um, such as something like Zeekly, um, it has to respond to every request. Like if you click on your browser, it sends a packet to a server wherever Zeekly is hosted that has to answer that packet and you know either play video or whatever it's going to do. Even all of Google is all based on the same technology. Um, so there are two types of uh, DOS attacks. There's, first, there's a denial of service attack from a single source and then there's a DDoS, which is a distributed denial of service attack, which can come usually from um, from something like a botnet that someone controls of compromised computers. Let's see. So you're so you're oh you just muted yourself, I think there, James. Uh, but uh, 
or did I mute you? No, I didn't. I did that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you got cut off there. Continue. Okay, so um, every uh, every packet has to be processed by the server that's hosting it. So if you have a website that's um, someone wants to attack you, they send um, so many requests. Um, there's two different kinds of requests that you can send for a DDoS attack um, at different layers of, of protocols. Um, so the hardest one to deal with is the HTTP request. That's um, they just send these get when when you send a click on a web page, it does a HTTP get to whatever URL you're sending it to, which is translated to an IP address. So they send a, um, a continuous request for a web page over and over and over again. The computer that's receiving these, you know, has to process every request. Um, and because of a timeout of a lower level protocol, it'll keep the connection open for um, that protocol. I forget what the time is exactly, but it has to keep the connection open for some time um, until it actually times out. I think it's six minutes or something like that. Um, so it gets overloaded. It, it gets to its maximum number of connections and can't accept anything else. And it just kind of sits there. Mm. So uh, what you're saying then is basically uh, it's just disallowing anybody else who actually wants to get in and do something because they're further down the queue? Yeah, well, it's overloading the resources of any particular server. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be a bandwidth um, resource, which is kind of uncommon nowadays, or usually an application um, resource. So it just it runs out of CPU cycles. It runs out of network connections um, and it can't it can't process any more information hmm. Wow and is is there any types of uh, uh, ways to mitigate such a thing like is there any kind of prevention uh... well yeah um, these days a lot of people pay for uh, their web servers being hosted and I don't know where uh, where Zeekly has ho is hosted I see they bought their domain name but um, I don't know, you know, who who's serving. I didn't really look up who who is serving them. You know, if they're buying space in a server farm or data center somewhere, um, data, data centers usually are pretty good at um, throttling this. They're able to black hole the traffic, but most mostly you just kind of have to wait it out um, because most most uh, attacks, DDoS attacks, happen for less than 36 hours. That's typical. Right. Um, they can go longer than that, but it just depends. Um, and usually you get attacked for some reason. There's not, um, people just don't arbitrarily, you know, unless they're just like little kids thinking they're having fun or whatever. But right. most people, most kids don't know how to, how to do it. Um, they have a, a whole gang of servers, a, a botnet, um, full of what they call zombie servers that are usually compromised people's home computers. Um, mm -hmm. This is why it's important to keep an eye on what, what's on your computer um, because you can get them by visiting a, a website or whatever. And usually you don't even know they're there, and they eat up your bandwidth as well because they're sending these requests from, from groups of compromised home computers. Right. So, like, these tip, typically speaking, then, like, if your computer's uh, chugging, chugging away and you have no reason why it's possible, then, that you could have one of these bots running. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, that there you have it, people. You have to, uh, you know, if you're using a Windows machine, uh, well, Lord have mercy on you, but, uh, yeah, make sure you... Keep your uh, virus scanners uh, up to date and what have you. And hey, if things aren't running as smooth as they should be, you know, get things checked out. Um, I was going to also say, uh, what about uh, operating systems? Is there operating systems that are more prone, uh, less prone? Um, well, no, because they're usually the, the hosting servers are running some kind of Linux or something, and usually on um, like a virtual device, meaning that it's one. CPU running many virtual machines that run on it, um, and the the networking is there can handle the bandwidth, but it's just the way the protocols are built that they have to service these incoming requests. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if a web server didn't, if a web server that you had set up didn't process those requests, it wouldn't know when to respond and when to display a web page or a video or you know whatever. Right. So there's no way then, pretty much, because it's like an amorphous blob of different machines uh, that are doing the uh, performing the attacks in a DDoS um, so there's no real way to blacklist any of the offending machines there's no automated way to do that I, I would assume 
There is, but it's expensive. Um, of course. You can buy filtering equipment, um, like reverse proxy servers and, and things like that. Um, that basically, they filter the, they learn the traffic, and it's just like a whole ton of servers that have to do these kind of things. Um, but like I said, it's expensive. Almost anything in IT is, and you know when you have this kind of thing happen, it costs man hours and time in the data center, whatever, to to mitigate it. And most data centers watch for this kind of stuff, and they will black hole your traffic um, if they see it happening. I see. I see. It all depends what kind of plan and who the data center is, and um, there's right. a lot of you know how your contract's written, all those kinds of things. Right, right, right. So okay. So um so going back then, going back to uh the the, the reasons for such attacks, like you were saying, uh, most cases these are targeted events then. Um usually either you know you piss somebody off or um they just don't like you or they got some kind of reason, um most of the time. Mm. Okay, so so all of us that are like using these other other shared services, like uh, or shared hosts rather, like you know, like and, and bigger names like Domain.com and and what have you. I'm just I'm just throwing them out there just as an example. But like, are these services? I guess like you were saying, are less prone to such attacks than because they've installed the appropriate equipment. Usually, because you're you know you're paying them to host the sites. How they make their money? They they're that's their bread and butter is their bandwidth and how it gets used and that, you know you can ask them beforehand if they have DDoS uh, protection more and more do but you know it just depends if they spent the money on that uh, I see I see I see um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, some talk and I haven't been able to get a hold of Jeff Sisk uh, over at uh, at Zeekly. I wanted to find out actually uh, before the show started I was going to try and find out what kind of a setup that they have. He had made reference to to, ser to servers being worked on so I don't know if they have them on site or if they go off site for them or not but uh, definitely I'll bring that up with him and uh, see if there's a way that we can't uh, uh, you know mitigate this because uh, they are like one of the uh, I guess you could say that the people with the best intentions, you know, and uh, I guess maybe that might have pissed somebody off. But uh, oh, you're, you're, yeah, you muted yourself again. Well, sorry. Uh, so yeah, who, I was just listening to you. Um, yeah. So who knows? Um, you know, if if Zeekly's truly private and they're not, you know, complying with NSA orders or whatever to turn over their their logs and their traffic and whatever. Um, they might become a target of them. There were a couple of private email services, um, LavaBit and uh, Silent Circle, that basically gave up the ghost uh, just this last year when they were with NSA orders to turn over their logs, and basically they were serving encrypted email, and um, um, they they refused to turn it over, and they shut down instead of uh, complying with the uh, with the orders from the NSA. Wow. So yeah, so you're either going to get it from, you're either going to get it from the bad guys, or you're going to get it from the other bad guys. Yeah, and and you know who really knows? Unless you sit there and you and you, you know, figure out the traffic, um, you don't know. There, you know, this stuff goes on all the time. You know, thousands of attacks a day, and it's not unusual. Um, it's it's just one of those things that that happens these days. It's just the way the system is. Hmm. Well. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, Saturday we're going to be, uh, we're going to discuss this in more detail. Hopefully I can round up some more people. I'd like to get some uh, professional hackers uh, on board if they would be willing to speak about this and talk about how they go about doing it. Um, you, you've been great there, James. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, guys, like I said, this was all, uh, this is an emergency bulletin. I wanted to put this out just so that people were kind of aware of what these attacks are. Um, James has been uh, uh, a very good guest here and, and, and giving some insight into this. Uh, there's going to be more. Uh, stay tuned for that. I uh, hey, by the way, anybody that uh, was gonna that that's supposed to be watching Jeff C's show right now, get back there and start watching it. This this broadcast will be put on YouTube and you can watch it later. Anyway, uh, don't want to take away from his show. He's uh, he's a great guy. And uh, anyhow, listen, uh, I'm gonna call her uh, quits for now. Like I said, this would be short and sweet. Um, 
James, I'd like to thank you for coming out. Sure, I'm glad I could make it. Um, I posted a link in the group chat that's a good uh, essay on, on denial of service attacks and what you can do about them. Okay, I'll make sure I put them into the show notes uh, for later uh, viewing for uh, for our listeners. And uh, if uh, you'd like to come back on Saturday for Saturday Night Show, we'd like to have you when we uh, when we uh, talk about this again, because I'm sure we can have other people that will have other questions that I haven't asked or thought of. Uh, sure, um, I think I can probably make it. Okay, excellent. Well, that's it for uh, for this uh, for this emergency broadcast. Uh, I'd like to thank my listeners, and I'd like to thank my guests, and everybody. Sleep well tonight. Uh, tomorrow's a new day, and uh, let's stand up for Zeekly. There's no uh, there's no reason that these guys uh, should be getting hit unless uh, people don't like free speech. So on that note, everyone, I say adios. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, James. Stay tuned for Saturday night's show. It'll be starting at 7 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, specifically. (laughs) Anyway, guys, thank you again for listening.